Hi everyone, it's MJ, the fellow actuary, and in this video, I want to talk about the boundary copulas. Um, and essentially, let's maybe start off a little bit with the history. So we've already introduced this guy called Maurice René Frechet. He was French. He was working with joint distributions in 1956. He kind of teams up with the American Abe Sklar, and they publish Sklar's theorem. The problem was is they thought that they had found this whole thing up on their own, where it turns out that there was somebody else who 16 years later, back in the 1940s, had almost beaten them to it. And this was this guy called Wesley Hofding. It's a Finnish name, so my pronunciation is probably not the best. Anyway, he published quite a lot of this work in an obscure German uh, journal, and because it was during World War II, um, he, no one really kind of picked up on it until, like we see, almost 20 years later. Also, um, Hofting was working on, he was working from negative a half to a half, where Frische was working on more zero to one, which allows more for probabilities. So it's amazing how this Hofting guy was very, very close to discovering copulas and their use in probabilities, um, but like I say, he, his scale was just a little bit off. Anyway, it's a fascinating history and I do encourage you guys to read up more about it. But now in this video, I want to talk about their three boundary copulas, also known as the simplest copulas. And the one that we've already come across specifically in the introduction video was the independent copula. And this basically says if two probabilities have absolutely zero dependency, thus they are independent, we simply multiply the two together in order to create the joint distribution. And this is something, like I said, we should be very, very familiar with from learning statistics in first and second year. If you're watching this course and you haven't done first and second year statistics, I highly recommend you do that first. Otherwise, the statistics here is going to get a little bit more intense. Then we have the second copula that I want to talk about, something known as the minimum copula. And this idea is that the, the copula function between f of x and f of y is simply going to be the smaller of the two, the minimum value. And we also have something known as the maximum copula, which says, you know, the joint distribution between two marginal distributions is sometimes the maximum of, um, of the two. So minimum and maximum are probably a little bit harder to comprehend than the independent copula. So we are going to talk a little bit more about them. But essentially, they all relate to dependency. So when we have zero dependency, we have the independent copula. When we have full positive dependency, we have the minimum copula. So you can think about this as cents and dollars. If you've got $5, you've got 500 cents. If you have $6, you've got 600 cents. The two are fully positively dependent on each other. You're just looking at them in different ways. That way, what we're going to do, if you want to say, what's the probability that I have more than $5 and more than $0.40, cents, it's simply going to be the minimum of the two. We then have something called the maximum, which is the full negative. Um, so this is when, when the one thing happens, the other thing does not happen. So if you flip a coin, if heads happens, tails can, uh, cannot happen. So it's fully negative on, on that ex extent. But let's maybe explore this a little bit more. Um, like I say, the maximum and the minimum copula are our boundaries. They are our extreme cases. So let's look at the minimum one in more detail. Okay, if x is equal to this you know, function of y, let's say a y plus b, and a and b are constants, then we can say that x is a monotomic transformation of y, thus x and y have full dependency and the minimum copula is simply going to be a lower bound, which means if f of x is equal to 0 0.3 and f of y is equal to 0 0.4, then we're going to see that their joint distribution is 0 0.3. And why this is important, it means no matter what two probabilities we have, so if we've got, let's say, 60% and 70%, um, the whole idea is that we have this lower bound where it cannot be less than this amount. Um, and if we now had to come to, say, the, the maximum copula, we have this idea where the probability of x occurring is equal to 1 minus the probability of y occurring. 
and coming back to some statistical jargon, this means that X and Y are mutually exclusive. Thus, X and Y have a full negative dependency. You can think of X as being the number on a dice and Y is equal to six minus that number on that dice. You'll see they, the two will be very, almost in contrast. As X increases, Y is decreasing. So this is our maximum copula and it forms an upper bound. It only exists in the bivariate case because as soon as you have more than two probabilities, then things start getting a little bit awkward with something being fully negative dependency. It can't actually be if there's, there's three things. You know, if one is the exact opposite of the other, then what is the third thing? So it only exists in the bivariate case. Um, so we can kind of see, you know, if f of x is equal to 4, then f of y has to be equal to 2, and this is going to be equal to 1 over 6 chance because it means you're rolling 4 on the dice. Uh, remember, y is simply going to be x, uh, well, 6 minus uh, x in this example. So this is kind of the boundary cop uh, copulas. We can make them a little bit complicated when we start combining them all together. So we can combine the independent, the minimum, and the maximum all together in this very big formula over here. Um, as you can see, we've got P, we've got Q, and then 1 minus P minus Q is the independent. And of course, these values just have to meet certain requirements. They both have to be between 0 and 1, and together they can't be greater than 1. But what is fascinating is how these things now relate to our correlation. Um, I mean, we've got Spearman's row is equal to Q minus P, and Kendall's tau is going to be equal to Q minus P times 2 plus P plus Q divided by 3. So we can take all the boundary copulas uh, together, and we can combine them into this uh, formula over here, which we can then use to try and represent other copulas. Of course, this mathematically does get a little bit uh, complicated. So in the next video, we are going to be look at the Archimedean copulas, which are a little bit more elegant. So I'll see you guys there. But like I said, thanks so much for watching. This has been the Boundary Copulas.